Social media is an ever-increasing aspect of our daily lives, mainly through Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. With the consequent large-scale spread of information having such an influence on society, conservationists are now asking, does social media help or hinder conservation? Research is key, so here is our plea. Money we need for us to succeed. Crowdfunding is the way, no need to delay. Help save the Kakapo parrot today. On Facebook or Twitter, so many things can be shared. Cat videos, news articles, people's opinions and thoughts, but of particular use to conservation, crowdfunding research sites have recently sprung up. These are sites dedicated to raising money for research projects, and among these are projects dedicated towards conservation. Sequencing the genome of the charismatic Kakapo, investigating whether the mate choices of endangered lemurs are affecting their conservation. Even David Attenborough launched a crowdfunding campaign. We are connected like never before, and opportunities to share information are gargantuan. Conservation NGOs can use social media to engage with the public and raise awareness of the plight of endangered species. The Wolf Conservation Centre has more likes than the WWF, and is constantly sharing photos of wolves. Also, people can get links to live video feeds from the enclosures of the Wolf Conservation Centre's ambassador wolves. This week is Hashtag Global Week, raising awareness of the plight of the Mexican grey wolf, with the aim of creating a national monument in the United States and educating people about the return of this critically endangered species to the wild. Don't pam us off, we're here to say hands off. Orangutans are here to stay, online petitions pave the way. Palm oil production is the largest cause of rainforest deforestation in Indonesia and once it's gone it takes years to recover. Deforestation has led to a 50% reduction in Indonesia's endangered orangutan population. To try to increase public awareness of this issue, Zoos Victoria in Australia started the Don't Palm Us Off campaign to encourage consumers to fight for the right to choose products that don't destroy orangutan habitat. Using social media to spread their message, the campaign has led to Australian and New Zealand ministers meeting in June this year to make a final decision on palm oil labouring. Less demand for palm oil will lead to a reduction in habitat destruction for palm oil plantation, which will make it easier to conserve not only orangutans, but other species that rely on rainforests in years to come. Another example is the WWF campaign to help keep Virunga National Park and the Democratic Republic of Congo free from oil exploration. This campaign encouraged over 1.6 million people to sign a petition, which led to Soko, a UK-based oil company, agreeing to end their oil exploration operations in Virunga. As a quarter of the world's critically endangered mountain gorillas reside in Virunga, this park is vital to their continued survival. Tickling slow loris, oh isn't it a beaut? I only want one because it's cute. A slow loris would make a great pet, Rihanna's got one so it must be a safe bet. With its big eyes and cute grin, the slow loris is the latest unusual pet to become fashionable. But this protected species is critically endangered in the wild, partially due to being sold illegally in the wildlife trade. The wildlife trade is often unsustainable, pushing endangered species further towards extinction. The rapid growth and widespread use of social media has allowed new platforms to increase wildlife trade, particularly illegal trade. Social media allows traders to access huge numbers of potential buyers. This means that lucrative new markets can open up all over the world. A market for pets in Malaysia has been created where it once was not possible. Almost half the species recorded were protected and illegal to sell. Orchids make up 70% of species on CITES, which restricts their trade, but is sold on the black market for tens of thousands of pounds. Social media allows traders to bypass rules that are trying to prevent species extinction. Traders can illegally sell plants and animals in private groups, making them difficult to track down and prosecute. These reasons suggest that increasing use of social media by illegal wildlife traders is a significant challenge to conservation. Misinformation is rife, causing strife. Killer sharks in the sea. But do you agree? Don't believe everything you hear. It's not always clear. Context is key to a large degree. Bloggers and journalists write quick, catchy headlines in order to catch the fleeting eye of online news and social media consumers. They know the headlines needs to make people react so that they can get a click out of them, the evil deed of clickbaiting. A case of misinformation having negative impacts on conservation is the demonising of sharks. They disproportionately receive negative attention and studies have shown this could hurt their chances of survival. 
Media bias can skew the facts that scientists work hard to find. A study of 300 randomly selected shark articles had only 10% featuring their conservation issues, whereas more than 52% focused on attacks on people. Sharks are over 420 million years old, but if we continue our ways, they might not be around much longer. There's more misinformation regarding wolves, despite attacks on humans being extremely rare. Discovery Channel's Yukon Men is a popular reality series featuring residents of a small Alaskan town with lines such as, The town is under siege by hungry predators. It's no wonder why the public can have a loathing attitude. Discovery shares short clips via YouTube with tens of thousands of views. Thankfully, many have a strong dislike to light ratio, but this won't stop some viewers taking away the impression that these animals are dangerous and to be feared. Social media can act as a platform for conservation awareness and fundraising. Large networks can support petitions for policy changes, however it can also support illegal activities which are detrimental to conservation. Overall, social media has the potential to be a real driver for translating conservation awareness to the general public around the world.